A very good evening to everyone. We, the team of Petroleum Engineers Association, is delighted to organize this webinar session on the theme, Advanced Mud Logging Operation. We are very pleased to introduce Mr. Chanam Singh, sir, who will be our speaker for today's session. Currently, he is working as consulting well site geologist at Cane Oil and Gas, has more than 24 years of ex industrial experience. Previously, he was ex operation manager at Geo Services, ex field site manager at Slumberger. At this time, I would like to inform you all that there will be a QA session at the end of the session where you can ask your question. Now, I would like Mr. Chanam Singh sir, to start the session. Thank you. So you can start, sir. I have... Hello. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Petroleum Engineers Association. Uh, for uh, giving me the chance uh, to interact with all the audience today on these advanced mud logging uh, applications. Uh, for those who are joining from the east, uh, good morning to all, uh, sorry, from the west, uh, good morning. I think we have around 105, six participants now. It's coming in, so maybe uh, one minute or so, let us just uh, wait. It. A uh, little bit on this mud logging. We all know, and the industry, uh, I think the students who are here, uh, the majority of the crowd also know, or some have, uh, have some idea about mud logging. <clears throat> but then, you know, uh, the mud logging has changed a lot since it was uh, how it was years ago. So today, uh, let me just uh, so we'll briefly discuss on some of the examples what the advanced mud logging applications can do it uh, in the industry and can help the operations in optimizing uh, you know operations cost etc. So I think uh, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead. Okay, so a uh, little bit about myself. Uh, as Nikhil has just introduced me, I am working at the moment as a you know, consulting well set geologist who can. Uh, I work for the Halliburton as well as the Slamberger Menace Ideas Project. So I started with the Ideas Project uh, for the same uh, client, uh, Ken, and then uh, for Halliburton. But then because of the pandemic, uh, uh, right now the operation is suspended from April. And uh, let's see when it will pick up again, when it will start again. Uh, before that, I was doing, uh, I was in a very short role in uh, Houston, uh, you know, with uh, Stanbridger, uh, we call it Prima Analyst. So which was uh, kind of remote uh, drilling operation support and also uh, analyst. I think I will just uh, stop the video for uh, let it flow. Okay, so yeah, uh, before that I was field service manager in uh, Stamberger in uh, Houston and prior to that I was in uh, KL, which is in Malaysia. And prior to that I was the logging operations manager for uh, Malaysia. That was from 2009 to 2012. And uh, prior to that, I was the operations coordinator from 2006 to eight. This was under Geo Services. And then uh, actually I started my career in the industry from 1996 with Geo Services. And uh, since then, uh, initially I worked nearly two years in India. Then I went to uh, Oman, then Yemen, Sudan, Russia, Indonesia, uh, and uh, Brunei. This was the field job after which I came to, uh, you know, operations in the office from 2006. A little bit about uh, my background. 
I did my uh, graduation in geology from Ferguson College, Pune, in 1992. And then my MSc in petroleum technology from Warrior College in 1994. So that is, that is little brief about myself. The next slide. Okay, so uh, since we have some students, I think majority are students, although you are all from the petroleum industry, I'll give you a very brief on uh, just a few lines. So what does the petroleum industry do? So we can mainly or briefly divide into, you know, the first part is exploration and the exploitation. Which, which start from actually right from, you know, submitting the bidding, the tender, and then from there, the project start preparation, then the, the different surveys, and after the, after the surveys, the planning of the wells by the drilling engineers, the geologists, the team getting approval, and and then uh, finally uh, go for drilling, uh, which can be onshore, offshore, or you know, uh, depending on the location of the well. So today we'll be talking uh, some part of the drilling uh, and the associated activities. Next is the production of the oil and gas. Uh, then after that, you know, it is, it is transported to the uh, refineries or sometimes as a crude, uh, it is ex, uh, you know, exported and then the sales and so on. And then it goes to the finally your gas stations or you know, uh, petrol pumps or the uh, LPGs and so on. So this is a little brief just to begin with. Then what is metallurgy? I think uh, most of us uh, know it already, but just to give a uh, very brief, uh, you know, uh, since we are talking about the advanced applications, we need to know a little bit basics of the uh, mud logging. So we can roughly divide into, into uh, three parts, into three categories. The first one is the data acquisition and the monitoring, uh, which means uh, this is, as you know, this is also called uh, surface logging, which means that uh, we do not put any downhole, downhole tools or, you know, any sensors down there. All the acquisition, all the signals or the data that we get is from the surface. And then why do we call mud logging? Like, like there, is all, there is also wireline logging. So in mud logging, we use mud that is the uh, drilling fluid is a medium. You know, it starts from like uh, collecting the samples where the cuttings are brought up to the surface with the help of this drilling fluid that is mud. Then the, all uh, the other things, uh, the gas is also transported or it comes up along with the mud. Then the, the drilling fluid uh, measurements of the, of the volume, all this uh, you know, mud temperature is again with the, with the help of the mud. So in brief, uh, we use this mud as the medium for our logging. Logging means the continuous monitoring and recording of the data. Uh, after that, then the second part is the geological uh, analysis. So this means what? So when we do formation evaluation, when we drill a well, all the cuttings from downhole uh, as we all know that uh, unlike the mines, uh, no one goes down no, to, to drill a well or to evaluate or to study. So the cuttings come up there. It starts from the calculation, how, how do we know, uh, you know what cutting is at surface? What are the requirements to do uh, uh, to get the right uh, sample? And then how do we collect it? For example, we are drilling at a particular depth and then, but by the time the sample reaches surface, it takes some time, which is non, uh, after the lag time. And then how do we wash it? How do we do the chemical analysis, the fluorescent test, the sample description under? So this is a very, actually, it's a bit vast. So we will not be talking much of that uh, today uh, because of the time constraint. I will be focusing on mainly on the, uh, the first part that is on monitoring and the analysis. And then the next one is gas detection. 
So you know that uh, mud logging is called the, uh, the gas detection system is the heart of mud logging. In other words, the gas detection system is very important. Why it is important? It is the mud logging unit only. Is the mud logging, uh, you know, logging unit only, which is at the rig side, uh, which can detect the gases like the hydrocarbons. I'll come to the little bit details of the gas in the after some slides. So, like the other services, let it be LWD or you know the wire line or so nothing else can detect continuously the gas. And this gas is very important, you know, is very, very important uh, while drilling a well for safety as well as for the formation evaluation. So these are the very brief basic three things that is done by the mud logging team or the mud logging crew, uh, you know, in a rig site. After that is the normal, you know, preparation of the reports, uh, which includes like the daily time plot or the operations chart, then the ASCII files of the drilling, the gas, and then the uh, geological report or the mud logging report. And then as well as during drilling, uh, depending on the client, uh, normally there are uh, like uh, the mud log. The mud log is, if there is a drilling, then the mud log has to be updated on a regular basis. And then it has to be uh, submitted to the operation, uh, to the geologies, the operation geologies and to the town. And then at the end of each well, uh, er, there will be a report uh, with uh, different you know, contents, like the ones uh, which I mentioned just now, all the logs, mud log. So there will be another type of log, which is called a drilling log with the drilling parameters, then gas logs. Then again, you know, there are uh, logs based on the measured depth, uh, based on the TVD. So this is just a little bit about uh, what we do in mud logging, especially for the ones, uh, the students who are from non mud logging background. And in a nutshell, what we do is, uh, you know, uh, this is kind of a log that we prepare. Uh, normally, the well site geologist will prepare. So what he does is uh, formation evaluation. It's a kind of like, you know, a, a medical doctor, a medicine doctor uh, checking a patient. Okay, he does some investigation. He talks to the patient, he asks his history, then uh, if there is any problem, then he sends uh, his uh, blood sample or some for the pathological uh, study, the lab analysis. And then he also will tell him, get the X-ray done, the ECG, whatever is required, whatever he thinks. So similarly, the log or the formation for the formation evaluation is something like that. So what you see on the uh, left side of the screen, the rig, then you know the different formations. So how do we know this uh, lithology? As I have mentioned earlier, so it is uh, the duty of the sample catcher or the mud logger in some cases to collect the sample from cycle and then uh, the monologue will analyze the sample under the microscope and then he will describe it, okay? So the description is put in this format. It is entered in the data, uh, in the, the database or whatever station uh, they call it. And then the other parameters. So these are, these, the, the, the lithology, the description are manually entered. Then uh, the, there are some, parameters which are recorded, okay, from the acquisition system, by the acquisition system. So those are uh, here, and then the gas readings are plotted here, then some other parameters from the LWD also in con can be incorporated. So it presents uh, some information, the vital information, uh, and then whoever sees the formation evaluation can understand that this is the uh, information of the way, of the formation evaluation. Like the the, the medicine doctor, the physician, after he sees all the reports, then he will do his, uh, you know, conclusion and uh, he will do it and then he'll give the proper uh, prescription or whatever is the next uh, action. So it's a very nutshell, it's like this. 
Okay, so we will not go to the very detail. So this is just to give you an, an idea. Uh, this is this is similar one. Uh, this is an example where I was involved in uh, from one uh, client and uh, from one company in Malaysia. So this is just to give you similar. Different companies may have uh, different formats, but the important thing is like uh, there will be some comments there on the during parameters, then on the surveys, on the lithologies then where we started the casing and so on. These are the symbols used. So we'll not go into details. This is just an example. Uh, another one is uh, like I have mentioned there, this is just a, you know, uh, in diagrams. So this is the mud locking unit. So mud locking is basically dealing with all the service hands, all of the departments at the rig site. Okay, so the client representative, you know, the, that is the, uh, it can be uh, there. Usually, there is a kind representative there. Uh, it could be the company man, and then the geologist is there. Then uh, town. So the the, the uh, rig floor guys. That is the driller, MWD, LWD, and so on. So this is all there. This is where you see it there. It's a recording of data, and that is the, like the control room. You can say like the this is the NASA of the rig side. So again, this is just an example of how the acquisition system is there. So many sensors are there. And then the gas data is there, that and, uh, the entry, the analysis entry. And then this displays are there, then uh, import of the LW data from them, the LWD guys and vice versa. And then finally, it's the logs or the data can be transmitted to town. Uh, another very important, these are still the basic duties of the mud logging crew, okay? These are still the uh, the basic. We're not going to advance yet. So every day in the morning, the mud logging crew has to send this uh, operation chart. So these are the like, uh, it is recording in real time. It is recording online. And uh, then the crew has to monitor it very, very carefully, very, very watchful. They can set alarms like this, for example, you know, these are the different parameters, uh, these are with the annotation. So we'll not go to the details. And then all the, the comments respective there uh, has to be put there. The next morning, whenever the, you know, the, in the client office, when they see the report in five minutes, they should be able to understand what happened in the last 24 hours. It is very, very important. You can say like, how many minutes did the driller take to make a connection, for example? Was there any problem? All the parameters. This is in brief. All the logs, all these uh, you know non-editable chart, which is very very important and very relevant. And still, this is the basic. So why why do we think or why do we say that mud logging is important? I'm sure, uh, if not all of you, most of you must have seen movie Deep Water, Deep Water Horizon. Okay. So this incident, what happened is that. Uh, this was the Trans Ocean Reef name, uh, Deep Water Horizon, and it was drilling a well in Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it was in 2010 that it had a blowout. You, can you imagine this? So, so this incident has changed the oil and gas regulations to a big, big uncertainty. So, why? Uh, what happened? I am sure you must have uh, read it. Uh, and you must have seen the movie also. If not, uh, there is a full report, okay, on this one. You can download it, there's a 126 pages. So one small example, which I would like to pull out from this is that uh, in this incident, you know, during the investigation, it was found out and concluded that there was simultaneous operations of mud transfer and uh, you know, operations. So at that time, at this on 28th of April, 1.28 p.m., uh, the mud loggers, okay, uh, told the driller that because of this, uh, you know, simultaneous operation, they had difficulty in monitoring the pits. So the AD, the assistant driller, told the mud logger that once the offloading, uh, offloading of operation were ceased, a notice would be provided, which was not done, actually, in the latter part. So this is just an example how communication it's very, very important, first of all. Second thing is uh, the, you know, very, very close monitoring. So I'm not saying that this was only the 
the reason, there were multiple reasons, but this was also one of the very important finding, one of the important findings, how important and how crucial it is in monitoring the well. And you know the consequences uh, in terms of uh, you know, BP transversion and the environment and the concern to the world. So this is just to give you an example, how important is that? So now coming to the uh, advanced uh, application, which I said, it will be very difficult to cover all, but here I'm going to pick three, three cases, okay? Only three cases from the, uh, from three cases by using the advanced application, how we can, uh, how we can optimize operation, how important it is, uh, okay? So the first one, is, <clears throat> sorry, I have selected a, uh, an SPE case. Okay, this is SPE. So some drilling guys, uh, they took, uh, they took some wells in Vienna basin. Uh, this was, uh, then they did some survey. Okay, they did some studies. So what happened is that if you see the, uh, how the timeline of a well is, uh, uh, recorded. So this is the theoretical. And when we talk about loss time, there are definitely there are some downtimes as we go with the operations, and there are some loss, but there are some invisible loss time. So this is invisible. So what happens is that once a well is drilled in a particular uh, block or something, and after a few years or after down the line, some years, if the drilling engineers or the geologists want to refer a well to plan another one. They need to see uh, that data. So that data, when at that time, this is what I'm talking about 2007 or so, so it was very difficult to find and it took them, uh, you know, uh, days and months and, you know, a lot of time because uh, it was not readily uh, available. It was not easy to refer and was not very accurate. So this is just to give you, I will not go to the very detail. This is just to give you how is this, what is this invisible loss time? How can we rectify this? Okay, so uh, coming to that, why we say invisible time? If you see the, the daily drilling report or the DOR, you know, this is from one of the rigs I have worked with, one example, so this is a real one. If you see here, starting you know, from two, and uh, for those who have already worked, you know that uh, in the IADC report, in the, in the drilling report, uh, the minimum time uh, breakdown is 15 minutes. If you see here, there is nothing like, you know, 17 minutes we, uh, we did the connection. There's always, fifth, uh, or we did that uh, break circulation or, you know, that uh, pumping, whatever. So there is nothing less than uh, 15 minutes. 15 is either, so it goes to the next, which is the nearest. For example, uh, the driller finishes an operation, let's say 10, 10. He will not write 10, 10. He will write 10, 15, or sometimes 10 o'clock. So if you think a well, when we drill for you know a few months, so the error will be very, very much right. So this is one thing which is still practiced today. Then what these guys, uh, this is the real example of uh, the Vienna case. What they did is from here it started this, uh, you know, automated operation recognition system. And I think now uh, many of the malogging companies are also have already, in, uh, you know, applied this one, implemented this. So from the uh, from the signals that is uh, from traces, the system can identify whether it is drilling, whether it is rimming, uh, whether it is just circulation from the different parameters which are uh, you know, required to call drilling. For example, for drilling, uh, the, I don't, uh, the bit depth has to be at the bottom. So like that, we will not go into the details. So this is how it is, uh, it started uh, taking into serious consideration that something has to be done so that uh, all this will be, uh, you know, correctly uh, recorded and then the data will be able to be used, digitized and used at the same time for future reference. So after that, you know, drilling engineers prepare this at the end of the well every. So if you prepare it uh, based on that 15 minutes, 15 minutes, the, how much do you think will be the accuracy of this? No doubt uh, they are preparing it. 
uh, but then what will be the accuracy of this? So if you prepare from the one to the system generated, uh, uh, which many companies, some companies are doing that. I'm not saying not all, but uh, I'm not saying that, but some companies are already doing that. So you can say the accuracy is much more in such cases if you use the, uh, the, the traces. Of course, the, it has to be with good calibration, all the parameters have to be QC and so on. So benchmarking is what uh, the guys in uh, Vienna did it. So after that, you can check so many wells. They did it, uh, I think, around 15, 16 wells. And then, uh, then they came up with the benchmarking. Then they could do the, the KPI and so on. So it helps to improve the efficiency and overall, at the end, it's cost saving. So this is one example which I wanted to give on the uh, about this. So how automation will help rather than using the traditional way of reporting the drilling uh, everyday report. So the second one I'm picking up is about the plot of uh, you know LOT rig of test or the FIT formation integrity test. I will not go into the very tale. The uh, thing which I wanted to highlight is until today. Uh, many of the drilling supervisors, many of the drilling, uh, the company are still using this very, very old way of, uh, you know, uh, plotting in the Excel. So you can see here how much volume has been pumped and, uh, and then how much, uh, what was the pressure, surface pressure. So there are, I'm not saying again, it is uh, this manipulation, but uh, there can be so many uh, human error. So there is, a, this is still there, which can be improved. Let's see this one, okay. Uh, I was in this well, mm, as well as in the, this well. So as I have said, I am going to pick up three examples. One is from the SPE, uh, one is from uh, well I work. So before the LOT, what we used to do, uh, by the way, this was uh, for a well in Gulf of Mexico. Uh, this was for uh, Chevron and I was in the Chevron office. So we used to uh, monitor this in real time. In real time, when the operation was going on, we had 24 seven coverage. Uh, the night was, uh, we were monitoring from our office and during that time we were in the Chevron uh, Houston office. So during, uh, as operation was going on and we had to submit this report within an hour. If you see the plots, there is no chance of uh, human interference, okay? So there is no chance of manipulation. And uh, these are generated by the system. And uh, we just take the picture and plot here. It is, it is not uh, manually entered. After the casing pressure this test is done, making sure that everything is okay, then uh, we did this uh, LOT, okay? So for that also, we use this, uh, one is the cementing unit uh, pressure and one is to the kill line. And then how uh, we plot it again, so and so. Uh, and then all the flow rate. For example, uh, here we see some are still using it, relying it. I mean, uh, one man of not, I shouldn't say relying it, but only one sensor, no, which is by the uh, cementers. So the mud bloggers uh, can install it, depends on the contract. So there can be a, uh, another sensor uh, to tell what exactly, what flow rate uh, they're pumping and the pressure. Otherwise, uh, they can get it through widths also uh, and plot the same. So what I'm trying to say is the upper uh, plot and then this one, the, the mud logging with a little bit more uh, effort, the mud logging crew also can plot this. So um, here I'm not going to talk about a contract, but you can see the difference between in the quality of these two plots, the reliability and uh, different sensors it doesn't mean that it will be the same number. For example, in this case, okay, so we recorded this uh, 1202 psi. The company man reported 207. It's just five, uh, you know, psi different, which is okay. It does not have to be necessarily exactly same with the company man. Of course, uh, to avoid confusion, we do not follow too many. But then, whoever reads this chart, they will be able to understand that you know, there are, these are based on different senses probably, and then uh, the recording, but the, but the reliability is there. So nobody can finger in this uh, data. So this is what I was trying to say, emphasize at the second point, 
uh, how this advanced uh, application can help in getting the real value of the uh, LOP or the, the, the FIT uh, when done. Uh, the third point I'm going to pick up is uh, about this talk and drag. Uh, okay, so while tripping, while well, maybe running in hall or pulling out or doing drilling, this is also one example where I was there myself. This was in one of the wells in Malaysia. Oh my God, you see the parameters that the drill is doing. He's taking so many parameters and you can see the below. I'll show you the chart in the next uh, uh, slide. There are so many minutes. So from here, what is he able to see? What does he know actually? He cannot interpret this. There's no time. He's so busy on the reef floor and so many parameters to take it. And still, it, this is being practiced. Okay, and uh, the guy is, after plotting, this is one example. You get so many plots. Everything is in one. Of course, you can uh, you can separate this uh, to uh, different operations running in or pulling out of hall. So this is manually done uh, by the basic logging crew or by the drilling uh, or even with the, even by the company man. Now this is an automated automated plot, which is done by an advanced system. The parameter is the same, the center, I mean, the, the traces are the same. It's just a matter of the software application. It's just a matter of that. So which is done by some of the companies in the advance. Uh, so you can see here, for example, you can put a little look and uh, uh, this is was one, one the, this was a trip out of hall. This was the, the rate one is the pickup weight. This is the free rotating rate uh, way, I mean, the the weight in between and then is the uh, slack of weight. So before this, uh, we will not go to the details, but the models has to be prepared. The friction factor, uh, the friction factor has to be, to be discussed, see it while running it, validate it. So uh, with this, you will be able to have, you will have a very good uh, view and then the speed is there. The, the best part is that no data is entered manually. That is the difference. No data is entered manually. So it gives you a very good picture. And you can zoom in out and do a lot of analysis. For example, you see here, wherever there is a tight spot, okay, instead of saying practically, we have seen, uh, you know, when we pull out, we got like uh, 40 kilo pounds. Okay, okay, let us report only up to 30. I'm uh, just uh, maybe I'm saying too much, but this is the reality is happening. So if we send a report like this, if something is wrong when before it is too late there is a time to look into it by the drilling guys in town or oh, the hole is really in bad shape okay so there is time to look into it all these are possible uh, if we use proper uh, if we make proper use of this advanced system the sensor it is the same sensor who will pick the same which will pick the same uh, traces or the signals but it is the way how it is being analyzed but the advantage, as you see, before we go into, you know, stuck up and lost the well, how many wells are still being lost because of negligence or because of lack of uh, uh, what call close monitoring or the analysis? So some are still following the old, you know, the cowboy style of uh, drilling or operation. So today the technology has changed and then you know, it's time to, uh, we can have to, to look into it. But of course, there are some companies doing it uh, by interacting with them. Uh, many a time, it goes to town only, and uh, not many people refer the the reports. Uh, decisions are taken at the well site uh, without much looking into it. I'm just saying an example, but uh, this is this can be still improved uh, by using this technology. Okay, so uh, this was a very brief. Uh, three cases uh, I picked up from drilling point of view or the monitoring point of view. The first, just to sum up again, the first one on, was on the uh, SP, Society of Petroleum Engineers paper, SP paper, where the automation of the activity, how we can, how we can help in uh, compiling or recording or reporting the correct uh, data for analysis, for, uh, uh, you know, making use into benchmarking and for uh, for reference for the future wells to come uh, 
or to be to be referred later. So, second one, as I said, uh, gas detection is the heart of uh, uh, mud locking. So again, this is a very vast uh, topic. Uh, we will, but we will go very uh, to the points and uh, brief. Okay. So uh, when we say gas, okay, at the normally at the rig side, there are we talk about uh, three types. One is the hydrocarbons, uh, uh, which will tell us whether there is uh, you know gas. Uh, the hydrocarbon normally when we say oil and gas, we talk about hydrocarbons and oil. The second one is uh, H2S, hydrogen sulfide. This is very, very deadly, dangerous. So, and then next one is CO2, carbon dioxide. So the second and third, this is for uh, safety, uh, safety purpose. So this from drilling point of view, very, very uh, important. And from the formation evaluation for the, uh, uh, for the reservoir, uh, the first one, which is the hydrocarbon is important. So most of the monologging companies, uh, the basic system it detects from uh, methane to, to N pentane. This is from C1 to uh, C5. Uh, those who are not very familiar with the chemistry, please do not break your head. Uh, there's nothing to learn by heart. It's very simple. It is just to tell you that we normally call it C1 to C5 and how the gas is there, what components. You do not really have to, uh, you know, know. It is good to know, but you don't have to know all the diagram formulas and what, what we used to do in, in the college days. Uh, that is not required. I'll come to the other slides. Uh, hydrogen sulfide, we talk about it. It smells like a, a rotten uh, egg uh, smell. Uh, once I was in uh, Sudan and we were there, I was there nearly four years. So we had uh, somehow that well started giving us to a smell. So the client, uh, the client told us to install our company is s to sensors and uh, we installed there we used to calibrate it and then we used to activate this once in a week you have to activate this and we used to make some good money out of the, out of our company but finally it was like somehow we are not we were not very sure it says that was due to the decomposition of the mud particular blah 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 but uh, uh, the point is at that time uh, nothing was confirmed and uh, it had the uh, properties of s2s and uh, uh, the company didn't take any chance, so we did install in, in more locations than what we had before. Okay, and uh, CO2 is uh, every mud logging unit will have uh, this H2S sensor by default, one inside the unit, uh, normally one at the cell sackers, uh, one at the somewhere in the pits, and one on the rig floor or the bell nipple area. And for CO2, unless it is a really a CO2 uh, zone, uh, mud logging unit has uh, one inside the unit uh, which is connected to the gas pump. Then units of measurement. Okay, so whatever we say gas here uh, for the talk, uh, like H2S is in measured in ppm because it's very, very low, like 10 ppm is already uh, very bad. And then the total gas in, in, in percentages, uh, in some places it is in units and climbs. And then the other smaller ones like uh, it's in ppm, in parts per million. So this is very brief about the gas. But like I said, uh, this is just a, another one, but you don't have to remember all this. Uh, there's no application anywhere. You just need to know from C1. When we say C1, this is CH4 actually. This is for the alkene. Okay, this is for a single bond. Okay, methane, ethane, then propane, and then uh, uh, C4 is butane has ISO and the uh, normal, but uh, then the same thing is pentane, ISO and, and the normal. So all the calibration gases come with the exactly what is there there, known ppm. You just have to use that one. There's nowhere you're going to describe all this. <clears throat> so that's easy. Another important thing is uh, not all are you know fully aware of uh, what are the gas uh, uh, type of gas. So it is very, very important when we drill, uh, when the gas is produced, uh, when it is uh, detected and uh, so whatever reading is coming, we need to understand it from the plot. Of course, it is not very easy for the beginners, but then uh, we need to understand that because why uh, there are some critical uh, types which we have to be very, very careful. For example, the, the connection gas, okay? so. Uh, it's very important. I'll just briefly, as you can read yourself also there, liberated gas means 
when we're drilling a hydrocarbon bearing formation, if there is a gas trap in that uh, reservoir, that that will be naturally liberated. That means it will come out with the cutting. So the the drilling fluid or the mud will come bring it to the surface. Okay, so it will bring it to the surface, and that is how. Uh, uh, there is what we call liberated it means it is coming from with the cuttings from the from the virgin rock uh, drilled the next one is the produced gas so when we start drilling from the the, the neighboring or the uh, the adjacent uh, formation uh, still get to be drilled so it also can 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 uh, produce that will also add to the gas uh, you know that is coming out so that is called uh, produced ga gas so liberation is by the actual drilling, produce is yet to be drilled, but it is also coming. So these two uh, is already clear. Then next one is recycle. Recycle means the word itself is uh, very clear. So which means it is not newly coming out from the hole. I mean, from the formation. Okay, so it, it means, for example, you have a very high gas of uh, in the mud, let's say, you know, whatever, 5%, 10%. And then it is in the mud. So if, if it is not properly uh, descended out, uh, uh, this one to the, the gas out, sorry. Uh, then in the mud, the mud has already absorbed some gas in, in it. So when we pump in, when we continue circulation, some part of it is already there in the mud and will come out again. So it will recycle. That is called uh, recycle one. Then another one is contaminated. Like I said, the one, uh, the example from uh, Sudan where I was there, it was uh, because the whale was idle, you know, after logging and so on, was idle for some days. And because of the, the chemicals there, probably, plus with the formation, so it got uh, reacted and then it was giving uh, kind of contamination gas. Then next is background gas. Background gas is uh, is the baseline. So I, I'll show you in one slide or in one of the logs. So it is the baseline means as we drill, for example, that gas, so it will not exactly just vanish, you know, after that drilling hydrocarbon section, it will be there some gas. And that formation, it will have some, some. So the peaks, when we drill the new, uh, if there is new, uh, like hydrocarbon bearing, it will be coming as liberated gas. Then uh, the background is the, like the, the baseline. So these three, these terms has to be very, very clearly understood. And above, after all this is the connection gas or the trip gas. Trip gas means, uh, suppose we, we, while drilling, we had the maximum gas around 5%, let us say, for example. Then we pull out of a hole. Then after some time, we run in hole. Whatever gas was produced, that is not circulated out. So some gas is there in the mud uh, at that depth particular. Normally, it is after the cycle. So uh, after tripping, after running in the hole, when we start circulation, when the bottom up is at the surface, so uh, there is normally a gas peak, which is called the trip gas, which is coming after the trip, after the leg time. <coughs> and connection is uh, when there is uh, the formation pressure is slightly more or is more than the hydrostatic pressure. Uh, that is one one uh, one signal that uh, we have to be uh, careful, and this is because of the uh, also uh, swabbing effect. So connection gas is uh, very important that uh, uh, the mud logging and the geologist monitor it. If it happens, then if it goes up increasing, then it is giving you some signal. Check your mud weight, check your all the ECDs and uh, like that. So knowing all these terminals will help in managing the gas in uh, uh, identifying. So another very small example, uh, not example, this is how, for example, uh, this is your drill string, this is the hole and how it comes out. This is a very traditional way of degasser and that any, not many companies are using this now. Uh, there are many disadvantages, uh, many errors. So this is how it comes, the flow, the degas out and then cutting exposure. I think we are in a bit short of time, so. Just to show you that. Another very important thing. So when we say a percentage of the gas, uh, total gas, maybe 5%, 10%, 1%, 2%, 
that doesn't mean anything. So what we need to see is that from which, uh, what all size is coming. There are many factors. One thing is, uh, in this case, it is the same gas, but the bigger size has, uh, you know, the same formation, even if it is same formation, the bigger has, if more volume is drilled, more gas is liberated. It's a very simple example. Okay, so smaller hole size uh, is the same, unless the formation is changed, then we, we are expecting less gas. Why? Because we are liberating or we are drilling less amount of the uh, uh, rock cutting, rock volume data. So uh, this is very important and very simple and very good example. The same amount of gas per unit of the, uh, volume of rock, but different bit size can change the total gas. As you see here, as we go from 17 and a half to six inch, see the, how it comes down. Another one is, uh, is the flow rate. So if you mix uh, in a, if you dilute rather in a more uh, higher volume, then definitely it will be less. So increase mud flow rate decreases gas recorded. That means increase means you are diluting it with more volume. So very important thing is when you change the, the flow rate, when you change uh, the ROP, which was before, uh, another one is rate of penetration. That also will uh, give you a change in the gas reading. So when you are interpreting the gas from the log, you shouldn't conclude that, oh, that well was, that well was so my this row. So you have to look into all these factors. What was the rate of penetration? What section was it drilling? Uh, what was the ROP, the rate of penetration? Uh, and then what was the flow rate, et cetera. Then only you can have some correlation. Okay, uh, this one is about, uh, on the gas only. Uh, I'm using this one, I just down, uh, this is from a Slumbeta website, uh, you, can, you can download it. Uh, why I'm saying is, uh, when I sort of logging started, I was in Malaysia and uh, that time it was Geo Services. So it was a very good project. It was the field trial actually, I would say, I think it was in sometime in 2009, it was a field trial and it was very good. So. It is published there. I will show you another one. Uh, you can have all this actual blogging. Uh, now many companies are also doing that. Geolog is doing, and I don't know other companies, but they're doing that. What uh, the main point, what I want to say here is that uh, traditionally, uh, the logging guys uh, used to collect the, the isotube uh, gas samples. So what happens is that it was collected uh, during some interval or it was at the gas peaks or as per the requirement. So for example, if you see on the left hand side, this question mark, for example, this was the depth collected, maybe five, uh, maybe thousand meter. Then the next one was 1,100 or 200 and so on. Then what, what in between, what happens? Nobody knows that what happens. So with this isotope locking, which is continuous one, you see on the right hand side, see how it varies the points this was uh, in the field trial, uh, you know, the isotopes were, uh, samples were taken, isotope logging was going on and uh, the, the data was compiled later. And when the first result came, I went to see the, the shale geochemist guy and he was very happy. He did not tell me all the details, but this plot for a, like this. So I could see that, I do not know the details, uh, you know, the, I cannot, uh, I did not know and I cannot share also, but you see the difference. This is how we started. The advantages is that if you take the isotube uh, samples and from the rig side, let it be offshore or somewhere very remote region, it comes to town and that time we used to send to the US. Just imagine uh, from, you know, from a remote country sending there, by the time it is being analyzed and then it comes back the result, the where is already done. So, it was good, but uh, this gap was filled up by this continuous isotope logging, where, where you get it. Uh, that time it was done, done by um, advanced system, uh, but after that uh, it can be done in the logging system. So these are the kind of advanced system which will help in the formation evaluation, in study geochemical characterization, uh, with this little bit of uh, extra you know, equipment and uh, application. So this is the advantage. Uh, that it gives. I'm just telling this one as an example. There are many more uh, in terms of uh, 
XRD. There are many other uh, applications that uh, also can help uh, to the and add more value to the decimal logging uh, to give more, more uh, output. So this is one example where I worked at myself. Uh, so this is just a summary of that. You know, shipment not possible, not applicable in in this uh, when we use it. But I should use it. Had to be time and so on. Next one is advanced gas detector. Uh, courtesy, uh, this is also from uh, some of the website which I just downloaded. You can get it. You, know, you can also can do it. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is uh, the advanced gas system and the standard or the or the basic gas system. Let it be any company. So, what is the difference? For uh, if we are drilling at deep water, this is a very basic though, but uh, still, it, uh, I'm just trying to show you the difference. When we are drilling at deep water, okay, which is very deep, for example, Gulf of Mexico, deep well, and the, the, the so cold, the, by the time the gas comes to the surface, it is so, the temperature is so low that the gas will not be able to liberate it out, uh, you know, properly. So you cannot, it will, you will have a false reading, although in the formation downhole, it is there. But with this kind of advanced system, they have so many uh, things under control, uh, like the temperature is controlled. Uh, first of all, the, the, the gas comes in near uh, vacuum or of transport, unlike the standard one. Second, most important thing is the temperature is controlled. Uh, in this particular equipment they have, uh, it is heated at 70 degrees uh, Celsius for the water base and uh, oil base is 90 degrees. So, and it is constant, constantly. So the property is kept uh, constant for, for whatever unlike the, the standard one. Any company, the standard one, it doesn't work like that. Like I just mentioned, gas tank pressure is their vacuum. Uh, and uh, another one is, uh, yes, uh, cycle. Ah, then uh, another one is the, comp uh, the composition. The standard ones is from C1 to C5, but this is from C1 to C8. Plus it can also the other types like H2S and uh, other more uh, parameters. Uh, in this case, uh, this company uses uh, mass spectrometer and the standard one, most of the companies use uh, FID technology. Uh, flame minus I think uh, that's all about it. Uh, we are almost an hour now. Uh, so uh, just to summarize again, what we did today is a little bit about the brief mud logging, uh, the basic mud logging, uh, what is mud logging? Uh, how is the data acquisition system? Uh, then what are what is the importance of uh, monitoring the well? Uh, then uh, then we pick up three examples. Uh, one SP paper on this uh, automation, the way that uh, drilling report is uh, still being practiced today, and what are the chances of error that it can give for future, you know, for future reference, for benchmarking. So the accuracy being like 15 minutes is a minimum split up as we all know. So what can be done and to look into it so you can have the real value of the data for your analysis in the different ways. The second one we picked up is about the, the way the uh, talk and drag uh, model is uh, being, you know, the parameters being taken in a very traditional way, uh, manually feeding the data and then manually plotting confusion and the interpretation is too late. So. <clears throat> by the time you're stuck. Uh, so like that. And then hole cleaning issues, for example, whether the hole is really clean or not, many other things. So that was the one. And the third one was, I think, on the LOT, uh, how it is, the, or the FIT, how the plots are being plotted manually still, and uh, the chances of human error, uh, if not a manual error. So we talk about the, these three main concerns. There are many more like this, you know, like... Uh, early kick detection system, the hole cleaning, the cutting flow meter, and uh, there are many more things that they are where the mud logging can uh, give uh, real value, give a little, little more addition. And then we talk about a few things about uh, the gas panel, uh, the advanced system, and the basic system. So uh, thank you all. And now I hand over to, to Nikhil. If you have any queries, uh, here is my email ID. My WhatsApp and uh, I'm on LinkedIn as uh, this time I'm seeing. So uh, over to you, Nikhil. Yeah, so we are going towards our question answer session. So our first question 
sir what's about the reliability of the sensors issue ah okay so uh, it is very good so when we talk about the uh, this uh, the uh, there has to be it is understood that uh, that the sensor has to be uh, reliable one and it has to be calibrated and it has to be verified this is a very basic thing this is a very basic thing it's like you know you are given a a good brand car but then if you do not check the the, the basic things and you you drive on that so the sensor this is this is understood that uh, uh, it has to be uh, properly checked calibrated uh, did i answer you correct yes, sir. our next question sir yeah one second Sir, has we call mud logging in the rig site the eyes of drilling? However, sometimes there are many sensor calibration problems, effect of vibration and environmental temperature on the sensor that provide wrong data. So, what's your view on this? Like uh, which there are many sensors. If, uh, for I example, yeah. See, I will talk about that one. For example, if you talk about the pit, the pit sensor, okay, the all sonic, ultrasonic sensors. Uh, I myself work, so I know I know the problems. If there is a forming, there's a problem. So, but then there are other better sensors, like the Vega sensors. Uh, very recently, I was uh, with one company when I was work, when I work in the well site uh, as a well site geologist recently. I was surprised. It's an Indian company. They had a very good, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, this Vega sensors. It never gave any spikes. I was surprised. So it depends on the type of sensor. If you are talking about this as a sonic sensor, okay, at the pit level sensors. I was in Russia. I work in a very cold uh, place in uh, Karyaga, but the pit room uh, during you know it was frozen actually. Sometimes it went to minus thirty, minus forty, but in the pit room it was uh, you know steam. It became so hot. It became so hot, and then it was giving error. So we were using this uh, ultrasonic sensor. And on the, another day, uh, my trip tank sensor, it was like uh, frozen. I didn't know what happened. So I went out. Uh, you won't believe uh, it took me and my, uh, my, uh, my mud logger uh, took some time to unscrew that one, bring to the unit. It was so cold. When I tested inside the unit, uh, it was working fine. Then I checked the technical specs. So it was giving minus 42 plus 60. So it was to do with that. Uh, so it depends on such kind of uh, sensors. It has limitation, but there are sensors which works very fine, like the Vega guided radar. Vega it doesn't have problem. Okay, sir. So our next question, sir, little bit long. While starting running in whole casing, for example, the sensor doesn't detect the casing depth until we will have enough weight for first casing connection. The driller has to inform mud logging data engineer that a joint is run and the casing collar level is on the rotary table in order to adjust the depth value in the mud logging system. So for the first connection, we can't optimize really the connection time because sometimes there is a lack of communication between the driller and the data engineer. What's your view in this regard? Okay, okay. So yes, I understand this question, and uh, I think all the mud loggers uh, who are in this uh, know understand uh, know it very well. Uh, the issue is uh, in the system in your mud logging system, uh, there is a uh, called uh, pond slip value. That is where you tell the system that if the weight is, for example, uh, you know, if the weight is less than this, you understand is uh, like uh, on slip. That means the bit depth will not change it. Okay. So uh, for example, we are drilling with. Uh, thousand meter and the weight on uh, the hook weight or the string weight becomes 100 uh, kilo pound. But when it is on sleep, it will come only for the for the top drive. So uh, let's say it's around 40 uh, pounds, uh, uh, 40 kilo pound. So suddenly that 100, when it comes to less uh, around 40, the system will think that it is on sleep and I should not change my uh, weight on hook. Okay, my, should not, uh, sorry, my, my uh, bit depth. So otherwise, then your depth will be totally wrong. Similarly, when I said uh, the way the sleep on a uh, threshold is uh, 40, initially the weight will be very, very low. So it is very difficult to keep it, to make the system understand it. So it depends on the smartness, uh, means you have to manually do it 
initially. So it is to do with that, uh, you know, very small difference in the uh, hook load. That is the reason. So anybody who has worked it, is a data engineer or the external math worker, they will understand this. But don't worry if it is from a student, uh, not to worry, you will learn it. And this is the basic. When you tell the, when you tell the system to, you are putting a command that if it's less than this much weight, uh, you are, you understand it uh, like, you know, it's threshold uh, this for the sleep. So your bit that should not change it. Yeah. So our next question, sir, for gas detector sensors test, what's your advice in matters of interval period? Periods. Uh, okay. So if uh, you are talking about, I think the, they are asking about the, the guy is asking about the calibration. I didn't see the chat calibration. So normally uh, the client will have its a requirement. Uh, the standard is uh, before you start uh, drilling, the gas panel has to be calibrated. Uh, secondly is uh, every, every uh, this section you have to, at least the calibration, uh, you know, check. So depending again, depending on that, but the standard one would be uh, before the start of each uh, section, you need to calibrate and uh, check the gas panels. So. Okay, sir, our next question. How is important is NPT and ILT information to exploration company or rig company? Uh, can you please repeat that again? How important is NPT and ILT information to exploration company or rig company? Uh, NPT. Yes, sir. Non productive time. Ah, okay. How important is it? Is it? Yes, sir. Uh, see, I do not know what you mean by important. Uh, of course, all companies want uh, do not want any NPT or you know service companies or they, nobody wants NPT. But there are times where you cannot avoid this. So there are two things. Uh, for example, if you are running uh, the L MWLB tool, and then uh, then uh, if, it, uh, if, if it does not uh, perform, then you have to pull out. So then it, the NPT, uh, again, depending on whose fault, you know, what fault, technical or... So it is very important and every company wants to bring down the NPT, but there are some unavoidable uh, you know, circumstances. Uh, if the proper maintenance has been done for for example, any like, you know, uh, the mud pumps, okay, the mud pumps, they need a regular maintenance. If the, the drilling company did not maintain for, for long, and then if, it, if there's a problem, there was, uh, you know, some problem, the piston and all that. So NPT will be given to them. Uh, uh, so yes, uh, nobody wants it, but uh, sometimes, or not sometimes we'll get NPT. Yes, sir, our next question. Yeah. What could be the cause of the decrease on the return mud flow? See, you, the question is, what will be the reason for a decrease in the mud flow? Yeah, cause. Reason, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So there are many factors. One thing is, if you slow down the pump, definitely there will be there will be uh, return. So when you say the the flow, I mean the the return, you have to always check with the the flow in, which is the pump. So while monitoring, you have to see. Always, you cannot conclude with one parameter. You have to see, uh, for example, I'm pumping at 1000 GPM and my pressure was 2000 PSI. And then my corresponding flow out or the return was like for uh, 50%, okay. We, if I maintain the same the same flow and then the return is coming less, that means I, I can see, I can think of, or I, the first thing my logger has to do is that he has to inform the company, uh, he has to inform the driller, he has to inform the company, he has to look into it. So uh, this is very, very important. So let me just repeat it. If you are maintaining the same flow, okay, then suddenly there is a decrease in the, in the return. So it will take time for you to find out. Uh, it could be because of the losses or it could be somewhere it is, uh, you know, the, it is uh, <clears throat> washed out somewhere. It could be many things, not necessarily downhole. The pressure, you have to see the pressure. First thing is you inform the driller, you inform the company man, uh, hey, driller, I'm getting so and so little. Uh, anything, uh, you know, anything just to let you know, I'm also uh, like that. So you should not com conclude with one parameter, you should check it uh, with the flow. Okay, so our next question yeah. How do we monitor and identify the recycle gas peak or trend in the advanced gas logging system? Identify, ah, so very good. Uh, 
the guest speak. Uh, when I say it about the, uh, I did uh, see, the guest speak, uh, there are two things, uh, you know, when I was with the other company, one thing they had is, uh, there was a parameter called guest at bit. This was very, very useful. So we could easily uh, identify the connection gases and, uh, and the connection gases, uh, sorry, the, the gas peaks. So there was little bit of adjustment in the software, in the system. Uh, otherwise, uh, sometimes it can be confusing. This is the first thing. So having this advanced system, a gas bit, whatever name uh, the companies call it, this will really help in identifying the connection gas or it is from the formation. It's very simple. What we need to plot is, I have some example, but uh, we don't have time today. Uh, we just need to plot the, the flow pumps, the gas at bit and the, the hook height. With this, uh, you can easily identify it. Second thing is, uh, in the advanced system, like the one I mentioned, there are due to gas traps. One is in at in and one is at out. And then these, uh, these guys, uh, they have a software. They can run the system. They know some, they have some factors and they can subtract actually the, the recycle or the, you know, the, in the merge system. So they can do some corrections and get the actual formation gas. So this is the big, big advantage. In other words, uh, we call this one as quantitative analysis, whereas the other one uh, can be qualitative. Okay, sir, our next question. I hope I answered sir, it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, your view, sir. How important is mud logging on MRC or ERD wells, especially in a development field? Should mud logging be used in such cases or can be eliminated? Mud logging will see. If mud logging is not there, so can that guy answer me? How will the uh, sample be collected? Who will be recording this uh, data? Who will be preparing the logs of the time plot? And uh, how will this uh, data be? It's not about whole cleaning or not. The whole process, as I mentioned, it is about real time monitoring for the safety reason, not just, uh, you know, not just for the hydrocarbons. There are many factors. You saw that uh, the Well Mekando movie. I mentioned about that. So what will happen to you? If there's no mud logging, who will be monitoring all this? First thing. Second thing is about ERD, whole cleaning. Uh, ERD well means uh, for those who are not extended reachable uh, uh, depth, I think. Uh, so it's a very uh, long horizontal section. The whole cleaning is a very important. There are many factors in that. Sometimes you may not see the cuttings uh, there. It is more important there. That is what my opinion. Uh, let me just tell you, uh, when I was in Malaysia, we were providing service for uh, Petronas, one well. So I went as my company representative for the morning calls every day. During the every day, we had a call from you know all the service uh, representatives came there. So we were saying that we were drilling. You know, normally the, the drilling guys are after you know after the meter is right so they want to build oh we build this many and then oh on the surface there is no no cutting it means all is clean uh, but oh, it doesn't mean that they did not know it they knew it that erd the cuttings get settled there you know the, uh, the bha and then so but they were not doing what was the, uh, the standard procedure of whole cleaning at the end we couldn't come out we got stuck we lost the well and it was a very expensive well also well and after that, they call all these service company, they call my company, uh, me, and then to ask, can you mobilize that, equipment, like the whole cleaning, when it is, you know, and the uh, four pressure guys, uh, there were no four pressure, but just because of whole cleaning, but it was too late. It was too late. So we lost the well and we sidetracked it. So I still remember that incident. Yeah, anything else? Uh, I think uh, all this for the today's session, no more questions from the participant. So I think uh, so. Thanks all for your valuable time and cooperation to make the event successful. I, on behalf of the Petroleum Engineers Association, thanking Mr. Charam Singh sir and providing us time from his very busy schedule, thanking him for his very informative and valuable presentation. Hope all of you have enjoyed this knowledge sharing session.
I am thankful to all for your active participation, and I extend my big thanks to all my team members for their extensive support. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, Nikhil, uh, on uh, on behalf of this uh, I, uh, I, and uh, and your team in the Petroleum uh, Engineers Association uh, to join in your uh, uh, to collaborate with your uh, institute. I'm also very happy. Uh, I'm not sure how the how the audience would benefit it because I I think uh, there are you know from student to someone from the uh, from the industry I'm not sure I haven't seen the, uh, the list yet so I hope to the beginners at least it, it gives some idea the inside idea uh, what is mud logging and uh, why it is important and what are the things that mud logging does and what are the basic you know uh, basic concept uh, and then how much advanced it can. Uh, taking this opportunity, uh, I would like to share that uh, uh, we are uh, with the association with Petroleum Engineers Association. We are thinking to have some some workshop uh, for a detailed program. Uh, it may be from I, three to five days. Uh, for the details, you can contact uh, Nikhil or Petroleum Engineers Association. Uh, there, we try to uh, cover more uh, with examples and with more details on the including geology part. Uh, yeah, that's all I want to. Thank you uh, so much, sir. Myself. And uh, once again, thank you all the participants. Uh, once again, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable time. Have a good day ahead, sir, and uh, have a good day to every participant. Thank you. See thank you. Sir.